beautiful people. If you are new here, my name is Joe. If you are not new here, welcome back to my channel. It is so great to have you guys all here today with me. So August was a month. This past month, I have been in the throes, in the clutches, the claws, the teeth, if you will, of a reading slump. I am so frustrated at this point. I'm frustrated, but I did finish some books since my uh, mid-month wrap up. Not as many as I wanted to, but I did finish some. So we're gonna talk about those today. A few stats for you guys, because I know I love stats. I don't know about anybody else. So in the month of August, I read 11 books. One historical romance, one thriller, one manga volume, one fan fiction, three fantasy romance books, one post-apocalyptic book, and three contemporary romance books. So we're all across the board. I was trying everything. I was trying everything, you guys, to get out of this reading slump. So unfortunately, we do have one 2.5 star. Uh, we have one 3.5 star, four 4 stars, four 4.5 stars, and one 5 out of 5 stars. Very much leaning toward the side of I enjoyed it, but we did have that one 2.5 five star. We're going to talk about it today. So in terms of format, I read five physical books and six ebooks. I did not finish any audiobooks this month. First up, we have The North Wind by Alexandria Warwick. This is book one in the Four Winds series. This is a new adult fantasy novel, and in this world, there are these kind of gods, creatures um, that are named after the winds. So we have the North Wind, the South Wind, the East Wind, the West Wind. You get the picture. So at the beginning of the story, we are following our main woman, Ren. Where she lives used to be covered in grassland. It used to be really good uh, farmland. Winter has slowly been encroaching further and further south. And we find Ren as she is trekking through the woods trying to find some sort of game that she can hunt and kill and bring back to feed her sister. If you're thinking to yourself this sounds like Akatar, you are absolutely correct. That is literally my first note reminds me of Akatar. In times past, the North Wind has come to their town in search of a woman that he can take back with him as a sacrifice, but it has been 30 years since the North Wind has graced them with his presence. When Rin returns from her hunt, she finds out that the North Wind is on his way and he's gonna be choosing a sacrifice. And unfortunately, her sister Elora, Elora, however you pronounce her name, is chosen in the lottery to be one of the women that is presented to the North North Wind. The North Wind ends up choosing her sister as the woman that he wants to take with him, and that night, Ren slips her sister some sort of sleeping drug and takes her place. So we've got a captor captive, we've got a Hades and Persephone type situation, we've got a Beauty and the Beast type of situation, we've got enemies to lovers, we've got a forced marriage trope, there is also a one bed trope in this book, if that's what you're into, it happens. This is a very, 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 very slow burn. There is no spice or any type of official relationship until about 90% of the way into the book. Um, so <laughs> if you like a good slow burn, definitely check this out. If you are a fan of Akatar, I highly suggest checking this series out. I really enjoyed this story and I can't wait to read the next one because uh, it's called The West Wind and I'm very intrigued about that West Wind fella. Okay, I gave it four out of five stars. Next, we have The Protector by Ellen Peer. This is book one in the Men of the North series. This is a post-apocalyptic story in which a number of years ago, World War III happened and it has been dubbed the Toxic War. Because of some of the um, weapons that they used in this war, um, the majority of the world is now uninhabitable. And when the world is picking up the pieces of society, women come to power because they believe that men are too impulsive, ragey, they cause all the problems, all the wars, so the women come into power and instead of forming separate countries as it once was, they form a conglomerate country under a council of women and this place is called the Motherland. Obviously, there were some men who were not too happy about this and they banded together and moved up to the north and formed their own type of society called what, the Northlands, something like that, and they're called the North Northmen. So in this story, we are following Christina Sanders. She's a history professor, but she's also an archaeologist. And when the opportunity arises to excavate a university that is found in the north, Christina takes that chance and she volunteers herself to go and see what's going on in the north. When she arrives there, she is told that she must have a protector because in their society, there are a lot of men who want wives because women are kind of like a rare 
rare commodity because they don't really want to live there, she is assigned this bodyguard named Alexander Boulder. This is a protector bodyguard romance. There is a forced marriage involved. This story has a protective hero. It is also obviously an enemies to lovers because these two societies are very, 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 very different. The main thing that I liked about this book was the political intrigue. I really think that if the romance was not a thing, I probably would have liked this book a hell of a lot more, but as it stands, I gave it 2.5 stars. In the Northlands, the Northmen are over bearingly sexist. It is painful for me to read how sexist these men are. The women of the motherlands are so emotionally stagnant because they have deemed all like release of emotion to be associated with men's rage or men's impulsivity and things like that. I did not see the chemistry between Christina and Alexander Boulder. I was frustrated by the fact that they were together, mainly because even though each individual learned something from the society, of the other. Boulder at the end was still laughing with his buddies, uh, telling sexist jokes while he was going to rescue his lady. I just, I don't like that stuff. On top of the extreme sexism that is found within this book, there is also a use of the F slur in the first book. And I tried, I tried, I tried to pick up the second one, but within 20 pages of starting the second book, the R slur was used and it just made me vastly uncomfortable and I was just not okay with it. I gave this one 2.5 out of 5 stars and and the only reason it got 2.5 out of 5 stars is because the societies in this book are so fascinating. It is kind of like the polar opposites, the extremes of femininity and masculinity. If they were set within a government society type of setting, it was very fascinating. But the romance was a big miss for me, babe. It was a big miss for me. I hated it. I did not like it at all. Sweat and Soap Volume 1 by Kintetsu Yamada. This is a romance manga. I've already read the first, I think, six volumes of this, and I really enjoy it. I think it's a lot of fun. Our main woman in this story's name is Asako, and she is working in the finance department of this kind of deodorant company. It's like they make perfumes, soaps, deodorizers, things like that. And throughout her life, Asako has always been very self-conscious about her body odor and her sweat, because when she was a kid, she was made fun of for it. One day, she is admiring the new line that is coming out for the company. When someone comes up behind her and starts sniffing her. And that is our main man, Natori. He is a fragrance developer. He is the one that comes up with all of the ideas for the different fragrances that the company comes out with. And he is inspired by uh, her scent. So yeah, it's a little bit weird, but I think it's so cute. Don't even judge me. And the cover is awful, but it's a great story. It was a reread. I picked it up because I was trying to get out of my slump. It didn't work. I gave it four out of five stars anyway. Next, we have the infamous book, The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. This is a very hyped book, both on BookTok and on BookTube and on Bookstagram. I see it literally everywhere. It even pops up on my Facebook. So at the beginning of this book, we are introduced to our main woman, Olive, who sees her best friend in the hallway coming towards her and she turns and kisses the first person that she finds, which just happens to be Stanford's biggest grump, Dr. Adam Carlson. And what ensues is a fake dating type of situation. You've probably heard every everybody talk about this. What ensues is a fake dating type of relationship. She's trying to reassure her friend that it's okay for her to date her ex-boyfriend. And in order to do that, she sets up this fake dating relationship with the grumpiest dude at Stanford. I really, really love this book. You guys know that I am a sucker for a grumpy sunshine trope, and this has grumpy sunshine written all over it. Olive is very quirky. She is so lovable. Adam is very grumpy, and he is also very lovable and I loved their little relationship and I loved watching their relationship develop from uh, fake dating to kind of friends to lovers. It was so cute. This obviously has fake dating in it. This is a workplace kind of romance and it has the grumpy sunshine trope, which I am an absolute sucker for. I'm not gonna go on any more about it. It made me smile, it made me giggle and it was a lot of fun. It was a lot, a lot of fun. And for me, it definitely lived up to the hype. I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars. Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren. This is not my first Christina Lauren. I have read some of their other books in the past and have really enjoyed them. I picked this one up on a whim 
didn't know what it was about literally at all, but I really enjoyed it. So this book is told within two different time periods. We have the then time period and the now time period. In the then time period, our main woman, Macy, is starting to recover from her mother's death. Her father buys a vacation home for the two of them by this lake uh, in order to provide them with some sort of solace away from their crazy everyday busy lives. When they go to visit this house, she meets Elliot, who is a studious teenage boy who vastly prefers to read his books in a closet rather than to spend time with his crazy family. His family, I know I said this in my previous video, but his family is very Weasley-like. It reminded me of the Weasleys, a big chaotic burrow of love. Um, and what ensues is a beautiful friendship that slowly turns into more. In the now chapters, Macy is a resident pediatrician at a hospital and she is set to marry this single dad named Sean. And she has not talked to Elliot for 11 years. One day when she is at a coffee shop, she sees Elliot for the first time in 11 years. She tries to run away, but Elliot runs after her and is like, hey lady, uh, what happened? I haven't seen you in forever. Let's catch up. And of course, there is a lot of history between them, not only their questionable love affair that is discussed in the book, but also a really, really deep and genuine friendship. I loved watching their friendship grow. Number one, it made me want an Elliot of my own. I need a BFF like Elliot. Thank you very much. We can sit in the closet and read all day, baby. Thank you. And I also really loved watching them come back together as BFFs and then as more. It was a beautiful story. It was an emotional story. I gave this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. And last but certainly not least, we have Flames of Rapture by Riley Cade. This is book one in the Carnal Fever trilogy. In this story, we are following our main woman, Sadie, and her best friend, Jimmy. They are both living in this very small town full of humans, just living their small farm life, feeding chickens and stuff like that. When one day a mysterious stranger named Gabriel shows up and tells Sadie that she is transitioning into what is called a succubus. A succubus is someone who feeds on the sexual pleasure and desires and fantasies and things like that of humans. Obviously, when this happens, the humans in the town are not very happy about this and Sadie is forced to leave her home. Jimmy follows her, as he does. Due to her newfound powers, Sadie can now see the sexual fantasies of pretty much everyone around her, including her best friend Jimmy and Jimmy has some some thoughts about Sadie <laughs> that's for sure through the course of the story Sadie must choose whether or not she wants to keep her best friend close as she is continuously trying not to feed from him this story was extremely sexual and I enjoyed it very much and I'm looking forward to the next book because the cliffhanger at the end of this book had me real intrigued there are also some political issues going on in this world between humans and and feeders. So obviously there are some decisions to be made in terms of that. But nevertheless, I gave this one four out of five stars and I'm so excited to read book two. So those were all of the books that I read in the last half of August. Let me know down below what your favorite book that you read in August was. If you are not already, make sure to like and subscribe so that you do not miss any more future bookish content from me. That sentence was difficult. I hope that you do. But that is all I have for you guys today and I will see you guys next time.